to agenda item 7D, and this is REZ 2024-09. This is the Dash Grove subdivision. This is a portion of 193 acres. Uh, it's R1 to R1. Currently, our request is for R10 and CG, and this will be served by county utilities. Mr. Dillon. Yes, sir. Thank you. As you'll note here on the site, uh, site plan coming up, the request is for multiple zonings, including R1, R10, and commercial general. Uh, you'll note the existing zoning pattern of a suburban density. It is in the suburban area, and county utilities are available, and thus all the zoning recommended uh, have been analyzed by the TRC and recommending approval. The wetlands are still being delineated, so the preliminary site plan you see is subject to change, but it is noted that the wetlands are there and currently under uh, jurisdiction. This is the proposed conceptual layout of the subdivision here. You note approximately 297 lots at R10 density there. Uh, in the orange, including the wetlands, you note the future commercial general portion there along Valdell. And then you see the future development to the right hand corner there, which is actually the south end of the property behind Azalea Commons. And that's being reserved as an R1 property. This overall request follows the 2002 master plan of Grove Point, which has been developed out more or less to that red dashed line there and you'll see the pattern. The applicant is now requesting that remaining 193 acres to follow the existing pattern, and their approximate site plan does tend to follow that plan, uh, plan as shown here. With that being said, TRC analyzed the request, stands exercise of zoning power, the adjoining suburban land uses, the various wetland locations, the county utilities, and the future road improvements to Valdell, recommending approval of R1, R10, and CG as depicted on the Dasher Road conceptual layout that you just saw with the following conditions. One, all lots shall front interior roads, and two, the owner of the subject property shall provide public road vehicular access to and from Valdell Road within 120 days of the reporting on the real estate records of the clerk of the Superior Court of Lowndes County of a flat or flats of a portion or portions of the subject property, which include a total of 120 or more residential lots. The Planning Commission heard this request, and again, no one sp uh, some spoke in opposition regarding the concerns of traffic, Planning Commission recommended approval with modified that instead of 120 residential lots uh, tripping 120 days, that it be upgraded to 200 lots before the uh, requirement to connect to Valdell Road. That motion was uh, recommended approval 6 to 2. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Dale? Yes, sir. The, the, um, the original 2002 master plan um, versus plan now, and you may have said this if you did, forgive me, but there's not a significant difference in the number of lots that we're adding here now versus what we were looking at in 2002, right? It's a little difficult to say because this includes a mixture of densities, including R1. You'll also note it had townhomes at the time, so that northwest corner there behind Valwood School was proposed townhomes that has since been come back uh, about 8,000 plus square foot lots. So again, single family is proposed throughout this entire development. The overall density, again, relatively comparable given market conditions uh, throughout the years. And this is 20 years in the making. So. Fair enough. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any yes. other question? Do we have any recent traffic studies in that particular area? Yes, sir. We have a 2022 traffic study that's done uh, as part of the scoping for the Valdell widening. The average daily traffic count was 8,164 along Valdell. That was a 2022 number. Well, Any other questions? Was the wetlands, once the delineation is complete and all that, done, would that change the number of single family dwellings that goes on this? Does that question come up? It, it is potential that it could change the overall lot count. Uh, the applicant, the engineer here, better be able to determine how much they believe. Uh, staff is of the opinion that that total lot count might increase, but not significantly. If it were to go over 400, it would trigger development of regional impact, which would just require additional layer of uh, scrutiny from joining neighbors, um, surrounding counties. But right now, the plans are approximately 300 to 350 is, is the staff's best estimate based on current wetlands. But again, the applicant, the engineer here, we might be able to better give you an update on the current status. But our engineering department will reevaluate that once it's done. We'll have to approve the layout for those wetlands, the development within those wetlands, if if there are any. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it, Teddy. So, Mr. Bill. 
So tell us again when the widening of the foul bill is supposed to take place. That's Mr. McLeod. That would be Mr. McLeod. So the, <clears throat> the widening of foul bill is proposed on the current T spots to referendum. If passed, uh, the earliest we would see any activity is 2027. We've got to let T SPLOS 1 finish and then begin collections for T SPLOS 2 if it passes. Thank you, Mr. Governor. <laughs> <laughs> you, I have a question, another question also. Uh, uh, given, that, given that we are, uh, uh, I guess, in the process of the luxury apartments and what have you taking place uh, and the uh, intersection improvement that North Hobson Road will take place uh, in August, uh, do, you, do we have a projected time frame that they may begin this? development that will make it work easier on the residents who live on Valdale Road? I believe the applicant can answer when they propose to begin development. Um, how that impacts the North Valdosta improvement Valdale, I would defer to Mr. McLeod on that, but I think the applicant might be able to better determine when they will start developing. Okay. Right. All right. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Anyone that would like to speak in opposition? Hearing none, is there anyone that would like to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Finishing up the where it's going to connect, um, it's to make it you know, the process a little bit more seamless. Instead of putting something in there and having to design around us, we just work together. You know, so, you know, whatever we do, they're laughing. But it wouldn't be an immediate impact without them. Um, my estimate would be six years. Six years? Yeah, I would think probably two years per phase. I mean, if you're looking to sell it, then you have to let them build their houses and sell them before you do the next phase. You don't want to flood the market. So, that's just kind of the whole process. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Dash. Thank you. Good evening. Matthew Newman, uh, Advanced Engineering and Engineering for Project 4560 Donald Drive. Uh, Scotty, answer your question earlier about the DSD. Um, we're, we're asking for our tenants only for our plans to do. 14,000 square foot lot, pretty similar to what was the southern, the Grupp Flames Phase 5. Um, that was the lot size we're going to go from. We're not going from maximum density to the big hit. 
Um, as far as the, the wetlands, you know, wetland rules are changing by the day. You know, they change. Um, they're never as it's never on the side of the developer as much as they want it to be, and it you know, never seems to be as good as we hope that they're going to work out. So, as far as the density change, it could change some. I would expect you know maybe five or ten percent, but it's just not going to be significantly different. You know, in a lot of those areas, um, you know, there are some little pockets of wetlands out there that maybe look isolated, but we may get some back. But those are you know we kind of got Sean's Park here in most of those. Um, as far as Valley Road, um, this is the Tier One project. My understanding from Mike Fletcher talking county engineer. Um, this is the number one priority you know, on the county's list for doing Valdale. And if the, the connection of those many, that many cars on the Valdale Road is, a, is the biggest concern of the project, just delay us making that connection. You know, the county's asking us to make the connection through the Valdale Road. If that's that big a concern, we'll delay that connection. You know, because we're, we're only putting that connection because we're being asked to have a certain amount of lots. And as, as I was mentioned, we've got to sell a number of lots to, to be able to afford to buy the road to you know, pay a section road. Because we're not selling any lots on like that, that thoroughfare road, that main road. No lots get sold the entire thing. It's got to tell you, you don't make lots, you don't make money if you don't sell lots off of them. So, you know, that, that road to be sold through there, we need to sell a lot of lots. So, pushing it back helps keep people off of Valdo Road and, and also helps the you know, developers sell off lots to go for it. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this request? Okay, hearing none, I'll close the public hearing portion of the meeting, and commissioners, I'll turn it over to you for your consideration. Mr. Charlie, we approve these two conditions. I'm sorry, I move, I move we approve the rezoning with the two conditions. And we have a motion to approve with the conditions. Do we have a second? Second. I have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the vote with a show of hands. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, if I, cares. if I may, was that the condition for the 120 or 200 lots? 120. For at the 120 lot count? Thank you, sir. 